Are you looking to break into cybersecurity as a beginner with no experience? Guess what? I've got the secrets that you need to know in order to be successful and get all those cool jobs that you've been hearing about. But first, welcome to the channel. Welcome back. My name is John Good, and on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That way you get notified about future content. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. Cybersecurity is an extremely hot career field to get into right now. And it's estimated that there's around 3.5 million job openings on the market. That's an insanely high number of opportunities. If you don't believe me, check out the article in the description that I've left, or you can just go to Google and search for job openings in cybersecurity. There are so many openings. With that being said, one of the problems that beginners or people that are brand new to the industry have is finding out how to actually navigate breaking into the industry so that you can land one of these job openings. Fortunately, you found my video where I'm gonna give you the secrets on how to do this thing successfully. If you just found me, make sure to check out the rest of my channel and my LinkedIn. But I've been in the industry for quite a while now, and I've spent a lot of time figuring out how to win in a cybersecurity career. Let's go ahead and dive into the secrets that you need to know and actually do to give yourself the best chance. The first secret tip that you need to do is build a home lab. Now you might be sitting there saying, well, what's a home lab and how do I do that? Great question. The idea of a home lab is that you have an area where you can test out new tools, try different configurations, and simply learn just through experimenting. As a beginner, your lab's gonna be relatively basic, but the good news is that as you grow and learn more, you can add functionalities and more technologies and tools. When you do finally land a job, one of the worst things that you can do in your company is to experiment on the production network, which is that main network that everybody uses. There are so many things that can go wrong and bad situations that you can create for your company we never try things out on that main network for the first time. We do it in a lab. Now I've created a playlist that will walk you through all the ways to safely build a home lab, which include a physical home lab on the equipment in your house or in the cloud if you wanna be fancy. I would definitely check out all those videos after this video. With that being said, the key things that I want you to initially focus on are getting both Windows and Linux operating systems installed. For Windows, you'll need at least a client system with Windows 10 or newer and Windows Server 2019 or newer. For Linux, I would recommend either CentOS or Ubuntu. If you really wanna explore some of the cool security tools that we have, you can also look at Kali Linux, but just be very careful that you don't run the tools against systems that you don't own because you can get a lot of legal trouble. Some of the other tools that I recommend looking into include Splunk, Snort, Nmap, and Nessus. Keep in mind that there's a lot of tools out there, but these would be a really good list to start with. Okay, now you've built a home lab, so what's next? The next secret tip that you need to do is take a course or a boot camp that's going to train you on the stuff that you need to know. I actually have a video on boot camps on this channel that's going to explain how to find a program and the criteria to evaluate if the program's any good or not. You can also use a platform like Udemy, you can use YouTube, CBT Nuggets, Cyberary, and several others that are going to range in price depending on the one that you choose. Don't worry, I'll leave links to all these in the description, but there's less commitment with training platforms like the ones that I just mentioned versus boot camps or programs through universities, but everybody has their own preference and there's pros and cons to each. The main thing at this point is that we get you started on learning topics that you need to know. This will also give you ideas on things that you can do in your home lab. The third secret is that you need to do research on the different areas of cybersecurity because they can vary greatly. It's kind of similar to a doctor where you might work in an emergency room or you might be a children's doctor. We have so many areas in cybersecurity and you won't like them all. Some of the most common areas in cybersecurity, and especially where people start their careers, include security operations, penetration testing, and governance, risk, and compliance, or GRC. Now at a high level, security operations jobs are defensive in nature, and they involve monitoring a company's network to make sure that people aren't doing bad things and making sure that you haven't been hacked. Penetration testing is likely what you've seen, where people are paid to break into systems and networks, and then report any vulnerabilities and security issues to the company. GRC roles provide oversight of security, and they make sure that companies are compliant with different regulations that can vary by industry. The more that you understand the difference between these areas, the more confident that you'll be in the jobs that you prefer. It's also not a bad strategy to get experience in multiple areas. Also, GRC has the lowest technical barrier to entry, meaning that you won't have to be as fluent in some of the complex areas, and you'll need to be better at dealing with people. This can be an easier area to break into the industry than the others. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. If you are, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's get back to the content. Okay, secret number four. You need to attend a cybersecurity meetup or conference. 
Personally, when you're first starting out, I recommend attending a local meetup, and then you can go to conferences and other things that require you to travel after you get some experience. These are great because you can start to meet people in the industry, and hopefully they'll help you identify things to learn, refer you in a company to get hired, or you'll actually meet the hiring manager. We have tons of different organizations that offer meetups and have local chapters in many areas. Some of the organizations that you can get involved with include ISC Squared, ISACA, ISSA, OWASP, IEEE, SANS, and CompTIA. And don't worry, I'll leave links to these in the description. A lot of times these organizations will allow students to join for free or at a very discounted rate, but these are gold mines for meeting people in the industry. Having a powerful network of professionals that you know will be extremely important in your career, and I can't stress this enough. Secret number five is to get a cybersecurity certification. It's likely that you've heard a lot about certifications at some point, so it might seem weird that this is so far down on the list. And I get it. Let me ask you a hypothetical situation. We have two people. We have person A and person B. Person A has a cybersecurity certification, and person B doesn't have any certifications, but they know the information that's covered by person A's certification. Given this situation, who's a better cybersecurity professional, person A or person B? I'll give you a second. Did you guess person A or did you guess person B? The truth is that the two people are probably about the same when it comes to cybersecurity. So I don't really care if you get a certification or not. The most important thing in your career is knowing about technologies and how they work. And you don't actually need a certification to do that. Most of the information out there can be learned either through finding the resources or through experimenting with technologies, plain and simple. With that being said, certifications do provide some key advantages that you should consider. The first advantage is that certifications have a specific set of exam domains or topics that they cover, and by studying for them, you'll have a structured learning experience. Sometimes it's hard to dive right into these subjects, and the structure provides a phased learning approach so you can essentially build up your knowledge like you're building a house. The second advantage is that certifications can help you get hired. Think back to our situation with person A and person B. If I'm a hiring manager, I don't have time to interview you for 10 hours to make sure that you know the information in a certification. It's just not possible. Certifications help to establish a baseline where I can assume regardless of it being accurate or inaccurate, that you probably have a certain level of information based on that certification. And even if you don't know it all in depth, you're probably capable of learning that level of knowledge and more. It's gonna be fairly difficult in an interview lasting somewhere between 30 minutes and one hour to qualify your knowledge if I don't have a baseline to start at. Now, all's not lost if you don't have certifications, but you're really gonna to have to go above and beyond to show that you know your stuff. That means projects, videos, blogs, and other ways that you can really display what you know for a hiring manager so they can quickly understand your level of knowledge and your skill set. One of the problems with that though is that I tell people to do it, they don't do it, they don't get certifications, and then they complain that they can't get hired. So keep that in mind. Also be aware that the overall value put on certifications can vary by the industry, the employer, the hiring manager, and the actual certification. Industries dealing with the government or consulting companies could even have contracts that require specific certifications. If we just go ahead and generalize the situation, the other factors that I've mentioned in this video are still more important than certifications at the end of the day, but I'm trying to give you the most opportunities possible. When it comes to certifications, I publish countless videos on this channel about which ones are best. I also have a free ebook where I provide a roadmap of skills and certifications on my website and the links in the description if you're interested. So I'm not going to dive deep into the specific ones that you should get in this video. I'll tell you though, the major certification vendors, they include CompTIA, ISC Squared, ISACA, eLearn Security, Offensive Security, Cisco, and there's several others. The available certifications for cybersecurity are going to vary in the topics that they cover, the difficulty, and the exam price. Question of the day. What are the things that you're doing to get into cybersecurity? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we discuss the secrets that you need to do in order to get into cybersecurity as a beginner. The things that we talked about in this video are crucial to setting you up for success and they will dramatically improve your ability to land one of those really cool jobs that pays extremely well and is extremely satisfying. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources and I'll see you next time.